Welcome to June's Leaco Challenge. Today's problem is largest divisible subset. It was actually Saturday's problem, but I unfortunately missed it. Given a set of distinct positive integers, find the largest subset such that every pair of elements satisfies um, modular equals zero. Basically, each number inside of the list is div divisible by at least one of them, or all of them, really. So if we have one, two, four, eight, this satisfies the condition because four is divided or eight is divisible divisible by four, two, and one. Four is divisible by two and one, and and so on and so forth. So, what's the brute force method? This isn't an easy problem. This uh, looks a lot harder than I originally thought. And basically, if we wanted to do this brute force, we would need to find every combination of the numbers. Say that we had numbers one, two, three. If we want to do this just brute force, we can say, all right, well, it's every combination. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's one and two, there's one and three, there's two and three, and there's one, two, three. That would be every possible combination of these three numbers. And maybe we can go through this list and say, hey, for each number, check to see if it's divisible by um, at least one way. So one, two, three don't count, but like say, all right, is one div divisible by two? No, it's one, two div divisible by one. Yes, okay, and have that condition um, meet for every single one and just check every single one of these combinations. But obviously this is not feasible. The time complexity would be ridiculous. Not only do you need to find every combination, you would have to go through each one uh, and check every single number to see if it's divisible. And th that just doesn't fly. So but let's think of it a different way. So originally when I first looked at this, I thought, okay, maybe this is like a recursive backtracking problem. Like maybe we build our output um, starting at the beginning. And I realized, okay, well, what if we sort these? Like what benefit does that give to us? So this is already sorted, but let's just, there's nothing to say that um, inside of our problem that the list given to us is sorted. So we know we have to sort this. And what could we take advantage of by sorting it? Well, okay, so let's look at one, two, three, and imagine how we would find how many divisible numbers there are. So let's start at number one. Well, what number out of this list is divisible? Um, what numbers other than one are divisible here? And since one is the smallest number, it's not divisible by anything other than itself, right? Because you can't div um, divide one by two or three or anything bigger. It's going to it's not going to ever equal zero. So, and we know it's distinct, so that's helpful. Um, so very quickly, we can see that the only numbers that we can divide it by are going to be numbers that are smaller, the previous numbers. So that's that's big. That's something that we can take advantage of. So we'll start at number two, let's say. Let's say that we're creating these lists here to check how many numbers exist inside. So with one, uh, we can just start with numbers that they're able to div divide by themselves and say we start at two and we can check is two divisible by one and it is right so we can add that to this list here and say okay we have we know that two is divisible by one at least and now we can go to three is three divisible by one it's like yeah it is okay that's good so we can add one here and what about two is three divisible by two, and it's not. So we don't care about that, that's fine. Um, but say that we had number number four, right? Say that we had four here, and we can check four. Well, is four divisible by one? Yes, yes it is. And is four divisible by two? Yes it is. But notice something that we could take advantage of. When we check two, if four is, is divisible by two, that means whatever two was divisible by before that, that's also going to be included in this four. And that's just a matter of how math works. Like if four is divisible by two, whatever two was divisible by here should also uh, be divisible to four. So that's kind of interesting. How can we take advantage of this? And once we sort it, we could imagine like this dynamic programming solution where we just take whatever we've calculated and add it 
to our output as we as we check what is the longest subset. So that's one big thing. When we check to see if it's divisible by this number previous to it, we also should check <clears throat> what was the longest subset that we had. Because technically, this could have different subsets like available for to it. Like for instance, if we had like six or something, well, six is divisible by two and one, but it's also divisible by three and one, right? Oh, actually, three, two, or, or whatever. You, you hopefully, you get the point. And we have to add this condition here to say whatever we add from these previous numbers, make sure that it's the longest one. So let's start coding this out. And I realize I'm giving this like very high level, but there's probably it, this would require a real deep dive to really get into nitty gritty. So I'm just gonna have to. Um, go with the high level here. So let's start with setting n to the length of nums. And what we'll do is create some sort of output list. Okay, and we'll have for num in nums, we'll create a output that just has a list of itself, because we know that the number is divisible by at least itself, right? So we have this and we're going to build upon this as we move along. So for we'll start with I guess in range for i in range of n. And this is going to be our first pointer. And we'll say for j in range of i. And the reason for that is when we check these numbers, we can only check the numbers that are um, smaller than it. So I forgot to sort here. We should also sort it. And I can do that at the top, just sort it in place. OK, so. What's, what are we checking? We're going to check to see if this nums that we're the main number that we're pointing at is this divi divi uh, divisible by the nums that we're checking. Our second pointer, nums j does it equal zero, right? And if it does, then we could add it to our output. But one thing, we want to make sure that whatever we're adding is not going to decrease our size for this output. We want to make sure that's going to end up being bigger. So for the output i, um, we got to make sure that it's smaller than uh, the output that we're checking plus one because we're going to be adding itself. So make sure that's smaller because if it's not smaller, if it's like if it's bigger or if it's the same size, we don't need to update this. There's there's no point in doing that. So if it is if it is smaller, then we should update this. We'll update our i to equal output j. That's whatever was previous to it, plus itself. So um, we'll just have to do nums i. I think that should work. OK, so now that we move through our entire list and we build our output, what do we want to return? We want to return the largest length, right? So what we can do there is just return the max output. But we're going to have to use a lambda function here for the key. We'll say lambda x equals the length of each, so each one of these, we're going to check for each list. And we want to return the one with the maximum length. Um, so I do remember there might be one thing we have to add here. And if it's if the length of nums, uh, I guess we can just check that here. If n is less than 2, well, then there's no point in doing all this. So we can just return back whatever's in there because it's either empty or it's just one number. So just return it back. OK, so let's go ahead and submit that. And runtime error. Um, hmm. Let's see. Plus I. Oh, of course. We're not checking the list itself. We want to check the length. I'm going to submit that. There, accepted. Yeah, so this um, took me a while to figure out. At first, I told you I tried it recursively. I tried like backtracking. I was very close, but I unfortunately failed one test case. And I realized um, once there was a dynamic programming solution, originally I thought there might not be. Um, once I saw this dynamic programming solution, it, it started to make more sense. So hopefully that makes it a little bit more easier. Um, don't feel bad if it. Like it's hard to understand. It just takes time to like, you know, um, get these reps. So thank you.